You're watching the KOA Morning News on Fox 14. Right now at 7, some middle schoolers had the opportunity to see the world as an adult. Also, a tip about a drug distribution leads to the arrest of two people in Web City. And we've got what looks like an absolutely beautiful start to the day, because it is, but it is a bit on the chilly side. Warmer weather on the way. We'll have a look at that forecast to get you out the door coming up. The four states most watched news starts now. Well, good morning and welcome to the KOA Morning News on Fox 14. I'm Elise Snowy. And I'm Chris Warner just after 7 a.m. on this finally Friday here in the four states. We made it. We made I'm it. I'm not sure how sometimes, but we <laughs> did make it. Here we are. Hope you all have had a fantastic yes. week out there. Hope you've had a fantastic yeah, you week as well, Chris. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, things going so far so good. And some middle schoolers had an opportunity yes. to learn what what we do every day. And I'm not talking about our jobs. <laughs> Just living life. Uh huh. Yes. For those of us that have to do it, we call it adulting. For seventh and eighth graders at Pineville Elementary, the chance to jump into the role of adults for a day is called a fun and eye-opening experience. Yeah, it's not so fun <laughs> once you're actually doing it, though. Yeah. Today, <laughs> photojournalist Ty Parks went to the elementary school yesterday to experience the real-life simulation event. What a real simulation. And that's R-E-A-L-L, -L, which stands for Reality Enrichment and Life Lessons. They have two different sessions. They have a reactive and a proactive. And so they get a, think of the game of life. They get a simulation where it tells them how old they are, how many kids they have, what kind of job they have, whether they graduated high school um, or not, and then how much money they owe in rent and things like that. And it gives them an idea of after high school, or when they drop out, if they didn't finish high school, what life could be like. Oh, Dyla, you don't have an account with me, so I'm gonna have to take back thirty no, or twenty. So the tables are organizations. It, you have a place where you get to go pay rent, or you have a place where it's the bank. Um, there's also interface services. There's a childcare place. There are two tables for jobs, one where you go get employment and the second one where they actually give you the job. And when you get that job, they actually have to wait five to seven minutes like they were working before they can go anywhere else. They even have a jail. I got an old car that breaks down often. I have uh, twins, and they're at the babysitter right now. And uh, I, got, I just got fired from my job because I came late three weeks in a row. And uh, I dropped out of high school. And I go to work 10 hours a week at an insurance office. I have a car, so I have a monthly travel pass. And I'm currently being evicted because I didn't pay my apartment bill, apartment bill. And I have not paid for my child care either. So I'm a lot in debt. <laughs> so between the two situations where there's reactive and proactive, which is the second half, they will get to see what it's like to not have a goal in life that you're reaching, um, that you set to get there, um, and that they, I hope that they see that they can be successful, they can reach that goal, and it would be better for them to continue reaching that than to just kind of react to every situation. Even before I knew I wanted to like go to college, but I, since I have like a bachelor's degree in the game, it shows me that like if I go through college, I'm more likely to get a better job, have more money to pay for everything that I need to in life. If I have a probation officer speak to, <laughs> to and not go to jail, <laughs> and uh, you know, don't make dumb decisions that's going to hurt you in the future, and uh, make sure you uh, get all your bills paid on time so you're not behind and you're not stressed out and feel like you carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. Pineville Elementary School and the Ozarks Area Community Action Corporation partnered to bring to life this one of a kind event. Yeah, I like that one girl talking about how quickly she was in debt because yeah. of rent and child care, but it does not take long. It's like literally as soon as you turn 18, <laughs> you suddenly have debt and you don't even know where it came from. It's just there. At least they accepted Monopoly money. They did. They did. <laughs> um, I don't know many places that will, but that's still a very unique and, and certainly yes, educational absolutely. experience. But 
Woo, once you get into it, man, it's not a lot of fun anymore. I'm just going to go take a it's nap adulting. for the rest of the day. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> not fun at all. Nope. <laughs> but you know what is fun? What? It's being able to get outside on a nice oh, spring yeah. day and enjoy it. And that's what you'll be able to do today, whether you're a kid or an adult or somewhere in between or whatever it may be. It's going to be a great one out there. This is our camera on top of the Cornell Complex, downtown Joplin. There's that sunrise looking fantastic. It is a little bit cold. Another perspective of that sunrise from our camera at 7th and range line also looks great no clouds out there blocking the sunrise this morning it is a bit on the cold side out there so we've got temperatures upper 30s and low 40s uh, the cold spot had been rotating through the area Miami was the last one as the coldest spot now it's come back circling around independence the cold spot at 33 degrees this morning so a very cold start for some of us out there however all of us going to enjoy much nicer weather today it is probably the most textbook spring-like day we will see in a very long time our highs right about where they're supposed to be upper 70s maybe a couple of low 70s out there sorry upper 60s i think i said upper 70s but you, you see the numbers they're right sunny skies west breeze around 5 to 10 miles an hour it is the most perfect spring day you could ask for However, spring weather isn't going to last. This is it. Tomorrow, it's much warmer. It's much windier heading into the weekend. And then it's looking to get much stormier as we head into the start of next week because with textbook spring weather comes textbook spring storm systems. We'll talk about all that in detail with that full forecast here in just a few more minutes. All right, Chris, thanks. Laniosho, Missouri school counselor has turned himself in for a statutory rape charge. Authorities say 40 year old Jacob Oaks sexually assaulted a minor several times from 2021 to this year. After turning himself in yesterday, he immediately posted bond. The Neosho School District says Oaks, who works at a South Elementary, was put on leave when they became aware of the allegations. Authorities have arrested a couple of people after getting information that drugs were being distributed out of a Webb City home. The Ozark Drug Enforcement Team assisted the Webb City Police in serving a narcotic search in the 700 block of Jillian Lane. Officers say they found narcotics and drug paraphernalia. Two people, a Donald and a Summer Tunnel, were taken into custody regarding numerous outstanding warrants. Pitt State hosted the Terrific Field Day event for Special Olympics athletes yesterday. The event attracted Special Olympics North America athletes, showcasing a potential model for similar events across North America as part of their healthy initiative. As always, with a Special Olympics event, many volunteers turned out to lend a hand. So we have a bunch of volunteers here today um, with various clubs, so health, human performance and recreation clubs, um, different HHPR classes and just different therapeutic recreation classes and just whoever wanted to sign up um, could to volunteer. Those in attendance could also take in a treats and trails event put on by Special Olympics Kansas and local groups along Pitt State's hike and bike path. Ottawa County residents had a chance to learn about resources available to those affected by the Tar Creek Superfund site. Federal, state and tribal officials were on hand at the Miami Civic Center for an open house to connect people with resources and answer questions about cleanup efforts. Yesterday's meeting focused on the importance of getting children blood tested for lead poisoning and free soil cleanup for residents. There are things being done. Um, it's it's not safe to swim in Tar Creek these days, but you know eventually maybe it will be. But right now the remediation is going to take a few decades, and when it's done, maybe we'll have uh, usable land out here and it'll be safe. The Tar Creek area was designated as a Superfund site decades ago, following high levels of chat pollution. Those are our top stories of this half hour. Coming up next, cases of measles are rising across the country. We'll have a to it. Some tips on how you can keep your family safe. Welcome to Miss Daisy's, curated to add charm and style to your space. Come shop with us at Miss Daisy's Home and Decor and give your home the makeover it deserves. In Health Watch this morning, the CDC has found no link between COVID vaccines and cardiac deaths among young people. The result comes from an analysis of death certificates from Oregon residents who died from any heart condition or unknown reasons between June of 2021 and December of 2022. 
Nearly 1,300 death certificates from people 16 to 30 years old were reviewed. Out of 101 death certificates where a cardiac event wasn't ruled out as a cause of death, 40 people received a COVID vaccine. Only three of those people died within 100 days of vaccination. However, none of the death certificates listed vaccination as an immediate or contributing cause of death. New research shows that chronic sleep deprivation could lead to long term health problems. The research from Penn State University looked at the sleeping habits of nearly 3,700 adults in the U.S. Participants were separated into four sleep type categories. Good sleepers, insomniacs, people who use weekends to catch up on sleep and habitual nappers. The results found that people with insomnia were more likely to develop health issues such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes and depression. To improve sleeping habits, researchers recommended that insomniacs exercise regularly, avoid caffeine in the late afternoon and to not use their phone in bed. Well, the Center for Disease and Control and Prevention is raising red flags as cases of the measles spread across the country. Many of the new cases, according to the CDC, involved unvaccinated Americans traveling overseas where they were infected with measles and brought it back to the U.S. Fox News' Gary Baumgarten takes a closer look at the risks, plus the best way a doctor say you can keep you and your loved ones safe. One of the world's most contagious diseases is surging across the country, not even halfway through 2024. And measles cases for this year are nearly twice the total for all of 2023. We're just waiting for another outbreak to happen, honestly. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention confirming more than 100 cases across at least 17 states as of April the 5th. Symptoms could take one to two weeks to appear after someone contracts the virus. Those can include a dangerously high fever, cough, red rash, and more. It poses some of the highest risks for unvaccinated children. For every thousand children that get measles, one will die and one will be brain damaged. While measles is still common around the world, health officials considered the virus eliminated from the U.S., Back in 2000, thanks to vaccines, but now, the CDC says, the uptick in new cases could threaten that progress. This is especially true because of how easy measles can spread. Traces can remain in the air for two hours. When people have measles, they transfer it to 12 to 18 people. The CDC is strongly recommending those eligible for the measles, mumps, and rubella shot get it citing how two doses can be 97% effective in preventing the disease. If you've completed the series of, of vaccinations, you should not have to worry. Gary Baumgarten, Fox News. And that's it for Health Watch. Now here's Chris with a look at the forecast. Yeah, we've got ourselves a sunny start to the day. A bit on the cold side, but warmer weather on the way. We'll have another look at your forecast here a little later. And coming up, we're going to see how airports are giving dogs a new role for weary travelers. Your April at the stables. Win your share of over 50. Take on the Birmingham staff. Wow, sensational. The United Football League, Saturday at 7 Eastern on Fox. Welcome back to the KOM Morning News 717 on this finally Friday, and we've got a beautiful sunrise out there. No clouds blocking it this morning, but it is cold. Take a look at that 39 in Joplin. That west breeze at only 5 is enough to make it feel like 36. Temperatures around the region have been cold. The cold spot has been in a rotating circle, I'm telling you. Between Parsons, Neotache, Sedan, down to Miami, now it's back up to Independence, sitting at 33. The rest of us, upper 30s, low 40s out there. So we are colder this morning than where we were yesterday morning, but we're going to be warmer today than where we were yesterday. You got to love how Mother Nature likes to mess with you. Sunny skies as we get the day underway, upper 50s by 11 o'clock this morning. As we head into the afternoon, we are looking at highs right where they're supposed to be, a textbook spring day. We're sunny skies, upper 60s, maybe some low 70s here and there. I love that west breeze at about 5 to 10 miles an hour. As we head into the evening, the winds remain manageable. The temperatures remain mild as well. We fall back with clear skies into the low to mid 50s. So we're going to be a lot better as we kick off our Saturday. However, 
It's also going to be a lot windier on our Saturday. We're going to talk about the weekend in just a moment, but our top priority has been our thunderstorm threat as we head into Monday into Tuesday across the area. So we're looking at a very classic severe weather setup. We'll have a low pressure system. We'll have a warm front. We'll have a cold front. We'll have a dry line. And as you know, that dry line is where things typically initiate. We have been highlighted for this severe risk for the last now four days straight. And on the long range severe weather models, not only is that unusual, but it's uh, also an indicator that there's high confidence that the atmosphere will be set up for strong to severe thunderstorms come Monday afternoon, evening, overnight and into Tuesday morning, possibly into early Tuesday afternoon as well. So we're looking at with the dry line and initial storms developing as supercells. Where those are are going to be along that dry line a little further to the west, and then we'll see them kind of congeal into a line of strong to severe thunderstorms once that cold front overtakes the dry line, and that'll continue to push off to the east. And so we'll be dealing with strong to severe thunderstorms into the late night hours Monday and potentially as we come on the air with the KOAM morning news at 5 a.m on Tuesday, we could still have an ongoing severe thunderstorm threat across the area, and we could still deal with a few scattered showers and storms, some of which could be strong to severe as we head into the afternoon hours, the early afternoon hours on our Tuesday. Won't be until the evening that these all begin to clear out of here. So here's what we're looking at in terms of the hot spots. The yellow zone is where these severe thunderstorms are possible. The orange zone is where there's higher confidence of strong to severe storms, and that does reach into parts of uh, southeast Kansas in northeastern Oklahoma, and that risk will shift to the east on Tuesday, but still leave some of us with that possibility of a few strong storms for us on our Tuesday as well. And with this system, we are looking at all severe hazards. We're talking large hail, damaging wind gusts, and that potential for tornadoes. So a lot to watch as we head into Monday and Tuesday. Between now and then, though, southwest winds gusting upwards of about 35 this weekend, but temperatures into the 80s. 80s on Monday, near 80 on Tuesday. 80s Wednesday will cool into the 60s for the second half of next week with more rain chances Thursday, Saturday and Sunday. Let's check your forecast. We're back with more right after this. Outpost Gorilla Glue. Of course. <laughs> Gorilla Glue is incredibly strong and versatile, even outdoors. <laughs> for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. Well, the summer travel season is almost upon us and everyone knows flying can be stressful. Yes, and one of the world's busiest airports is helping travelers take a load off with help from some furry friends. These pups are on patrol at Istanbul Airport. They're not sniffing out drugs, but searching for tense travelers passing through Turkey. This dog handler says we see a lot of demand for therapy dogs. They help people to relax. Border Collie Alida leads the pack of this pilot project, giving kisses and comfort. After your long flight or your gas stressful or you lost something, you need something like can keep you calm down and uh, something that's like the dog is wonderful. Italian retriever Cookie loves belly rubs. I think it looks nice to how like friendly dogs in the airports. And research shows this positive approach has health benefits reducing stress, raising feel-good hormones, and lowering blood pressure. They stop people worrying, and, and they make people happy. The idea is being unleashed at airports around the world, from the UK to Miami International. He's here to keep you happy and de-stressed. He's doing a great job. Is he? <laughs> He's yeah. doing a great job, hey, bro. It's dogs doing what they do best. This is Brody. See how soft he is? Being hey, our Brody. best friends. Well, vets at Istanbul Airport say they monitor the health of the therapy dogs as well. They want to make sure they also don't get stressed out during their six hour day. And I can imagine with all those folks there, it might be a little easy to get stressed out, a little too yeah, excited a little sometimes. Excited. Yeah, absolutely. But boy, are they cute. They are. All right. Well, coming up, a new court motion is aimed at releasing the name of the Joplin officer involved with the shooting death of a two year old. And we've got ourselves a beautiful start to the day, albeit on the cold side. We'll have another look at your forecast when the KOAM Morning News returns. A style all their own, because you're not everyone. And that's a good thing. Bad boy, mow with an attitude. The four states most watched news starts now. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News on Fox 14. It's currently 728. I'm Elise Snowy. 
Pittsburgh police arrest two people in connection with the overdose death of a teenager. Police started investigating last April after 18 year old Cooper Campidi of Frontenac died of a fentanyl overdose. Then Wednesday, they arrested two suspects believed to have sold Campidi the drugs. Official charges against the suspects are pending. The Carthage City Council met a last night for a second time this week, this time to discuss the possible removal of a city personnel. During a Tuesday night's meeting, the City Council raised the issue of a passing articles of impeachment against Mayor Dan Reif and termination of employment of City Administrator Greg Dagnan. The decision to hold a last night's special meeting to discuss those topics was also raised Tuesday night. Another new agenda item for last night's closed session concerns prohibiting against council members talking to the media about city related issues without council or committee approval. The session is scheduled to begin at 630. Six months ago, the destiny of about 1500 people was uncertain as the Tyson plant in Knoll, Missouri was closing its doors. KOM spoke to some former employees to hear what their lives look like half a year later. They say the burden has been especially difficult, both emotionally and financially. We're like family. We have all gone through a lot during the time that we were working together. We were trying to stretch our money as best as we can. We were trying to, you know, make sure we had everything we need in the house, food, um, a place to live, everything. Both Harper and Bradshaw chose not to work at the plan until the very last day. They were afraid they'd be unable to find a job when many of Tyson's workforce was also job hunting. Tonight, we'll hear more about how the closure of the plant has impacted Knoll and its local businesses. And we've got ourselves a cold start to the day, but it is going to turn out to be a very nice, warm, very spring like day. Our camera 7th and range line. Take a look. Not a cloud in the sky out there, which is why we also have ample sunshine. So you recall yesterday the clouds off to the east were kind of blocking the sunrise for a little bit, making it a little darker down here. As we look at temperatures around the region, the cold spots still holding on in Independence at 34. Everyone else upper 30s for the most part and some low 40s out there as well. So definitely colder than where we were yesterday. And the irony is that Mother Nature is going to allow us to be warmer today than we were yesterday as we head into the upper 60s, maybe a couple of low 70s. So seasonable temperatures right about where we're supposed to be. West breeze around 5 to 10 and nothing but sunny skies out there. Winds are going to pick up as we head into the weekend. Temperatures are going to pick up heading into the weekend and we're tracking thunderstorm chances as we kick off the next work week. We're going to look at all of that in the full forecast, and that's coming up here in just a few more minutes. Elise. All right, thanks, Chris. Well, a new court motion is seeking to release the name of the Joplin police officer who fatally shot a two year old girl nearly two years ago. A sniper one, a Joplin SWAT team member, fatally shot a two year old Cleslin Crawford while responding to a domestic violence call in Baxter Springs in March of 2022. The Cherokee County Sheriff's Office responded to a call from a woman asking for help at 340 Wyandotte Avenue in Baxter Springs. When officers arrived, Eli Crawford shot Taylor Shute and went back into the home with two-year-old Cleslin. According to the police, Eli started shooting at officers. The standoff lasted more than three hours. When law enforcement was able to approach the home, they found Eli and Cleslin dead inside. The KBI investigation indicates that two-year-old Cleslin Crawford died as a result of a single round fired by an officer from the Joplin Police Department. Now a motion is requesting the court to release Sniper One's identity. The court document states the profound interest in uncovering the truth far outweighs the privacy of Sniper One. And after reaching out to the Joplin Police Department on the matter, we received this statement from Chief Pearson, stating that the case is closed and the department has no comment. And that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOA Morning News. The Biden administration is moving to expand background checks on a gun sales. We'll have the details on what that means for you.
72 hours. Get 30% off your first item plus 20% off the rest of your purchase. Or get 0% interest for five years. Shop now, spend less, and get more. Only at Ashley. Welcome back. We've got Shannon Becker in the studio with Hazy Big. Three news stories of the week. Good morning, Shannon. Good Thank morning, you for being Elise. with us this well, morning. No problem. Let's take a look at the big three stories. What's live and local happening where you live. I've never got to experience this until this wow. week. Bee swarm season. So this is when a queen leaves a hive and she goes off to start a new one. Okay. Uh, this is one of my friends, Jared. He, uh, we had been in contact. He said, hey, if I ever get a swarm and I, he called me off, I went. So what he's doing, he's removing that swarm from this fire hydrant and then he'll relocate it. It took a little bit of time, probably a couple of hours. So he'll oh, wow. he grab these handfuls of bees. I was wearing a net and everything. Like I was wearing, the, yes. I was the real deal. Um, so just bragging a little there. Sorry. <laughs> so, um, he, so as he grabbed all these handfuls of bees, oh, the queen was wow. in there somewhere. He said there were just thousands and thousands of, obviously you couldn't, didn't know how many, but he puts them in this box and then that smoke, it just kind of gently alerts them to, hey, keep on moving. It's not a hot smoke. And so they go in this little hole through the box and then they surrounded the queen and he took them to the house. He said, we'll follow up. He said he has them in a hive now at his house in a different box. And so everything's going good. Oh, wonderful. Great hive. to hear. Yeah, really wow. interesting. Our number two story, KOM News Now, Joplin News First. It was the total eclipse of the heart. Well, other TV <laughs> stations, we saw KY3 from Springfield on our way there. I went to the West Plains area for the solar eclipse. It was totality for three minutes and one second. I met up with some friends and kind of went around West Plains, kind of see all the different things they right, were doing. Yes. It was it was busy, but not crazy busy. Uh, we actually went to Mountain View, Missouri, where we saw that total eclipse. You could take off your glasses during the middle of it because you know it was you didn't need them. Right, the, absolutely. The bright sun, but when it came out, it came out quickly. So it was really really interesting to see. Absolutely. It'd be 2044. Uh, we did that. It was a Viandel Vineyards. It was a kind of a nice place there. It's on Highway 60. And then our number one story, KOAM News Now, sadness for those Chuck E. Cheese fans. Oh, yes. A lot of people really were interested in this. The nostalgia, too. I guess. Yes. Uh, we've, we had a showbiz pizza in the 80s here in Joplin, which was the precursor to uh, Chuck E. Cheese. Okay. So this has been open about 20 years. They came out of bankruptcy in 2021. There's no reason they said necessarily for this closing. However, it was very abrupt. Employees, according to a letter, they had about 10 days, but uh, employees told me they only had three days before they knew that they were gonna lose their wow, jobs. three days. Yeah, well, that's pretty quick. They, they've only closed eight across the country, so it's not like a huge trend. They're opening new ones in Fort Worth this week and new ones in, a lot, in uh, Louisiana as well. So it, maybe it was underperforming or rent issue, not sure. I see, yes. And then our bonus story of the week is a awesome story we like to cover every year. It's the Cold Arby cruising to prom. It's been 11 years since Joplin High School senior there. Yeah, that is Cole Darby. <laughs> he was graduating from high school. He's in the special education department. And he told his mom and dad, he's like, I'm going to drive our classic pickup truck to prom. <laughs> well, he's in the special ed department. He cannot drive, you know, and as well as other kids in that. So his mom and dad got together some of their friends with classic cars. This is the 11th year in a row. They had about 40 cars. Oh, wow. And the kids get to go to a special dinner. Everybody's all dressed up for prom. And then they get to pick out a car, a, a classic ride, or you know, something really old and cool or something new and cool. So special it's, moment. Yeah, it's really, really awesome. Oh, I love doing cool. it every year. And I really appreciate Leanne and, and Ron Darby who do that and all the volunteers. And everybody. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yes. It's the cruise to prom. What did you ride to prom in? I didn't go to prom. Oh. I didn't go to prom. Shh, don't tell anyone. Well, Shannon, thank you so much for right. being with us this morning. Stick around. We'll be right back. In Chevy truck season, get as low as 0.9% financing in all 2024 Silverado 1500 pickups. Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News 741 now on this finally Friday and we've got a beautiful start to the day. Clear skies out there, looks lovely, doesn't feel so lovely yet. 39 in Joplin, feels like 36 with that west breeze at about 5 miles an hour. Temperatures around the region hanging out into the upper 30s and the low 40s. I'm looking and we no longer have a specific cold spot. It had been kind of circling around this region right here. 
but now we're all starting to progressively warm up across the area. Sunny skies as we get the morning underway 58 by 11 o'clock this morning. Highs today right where they're supposed to be. This is a textbook spring day across the area. Upper 60s, maybe some low 70s. Sunny skies out there clear as we head into the evening as well. Temperatures not bad. Low to mid 50s out there. What we want to talk about though in a little more details our thunderstorm chances Monday. We're looking at a classic severe weather setup. We'll have a cold front, dry line, warm front, low pressure system. We're looking initially at supercellular development out to our west by Monday evening, and that's going to bring strong to severe thunderstorms, and then those will congeal or they're expected to congeal into a line once the cold front overtakes that dry line, and we'll have a line of strong to severe storms late Monday night, and that could last into Tuesday morning across the area as we get the KOAM morning news underway. As you get your day underway Tuesday, we could have an ongoing severe threat, and we could still deal with with some scattered showers and storms, and some of those could still be strong to severe through the first portion of our Tuesday. By Tuesday evening, the last of this activity is going to start to roll out of here, and we'll have just enough time to warm into the upper 70s. So the severe weather highlight areas have been consistent now. This is the fourth day in a row, and long-term severe weather highlights don't usually come out unless there's consistency and high probability that the atmosphere, at least, will be set up for a severe weather event. And that's why they've been out here consistently. Now, the yellow is where severe storms are possible. The orange is where confidence is a little higher in severe storm coverage, and that includes parts of southeast Kansas and northeast Oklahoma. As we go overnight and into Tuesday, that threat begins to shift east. But as you can see, we still have that possible zone into parts of our area here because we could just still deal with a couple of additional storms on our Tuesday. And unfortunately, this is a very classic severe weather setup. And that said, that does bring the risk of all severe threats. So we're talking large hail, damaging wind gusts, and the potential for tornadoes. So it is something we want to keep a very close eye on as we head into Monday and Tuesday. We've been talking about it now for a few days, and we're just continuing to give you that heads up. In between here and there, though, breezy Saturday, Sunday. Winds gusting out of the southwest up to 35, but take a look at this all the way through Monday into the 80s. Near 80 on Tuesday, 80s on Wednesday. Another system Thursday kicks us down into the 60s, so back to about normal with storm chances Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday of next week. That's checking your forecast. Now we're sending it over to Elise with Consumer Watch. All right, thanks, Chris. Well, a company is recalling its mini speakers that could catch on fire. The Consumer Product Safety Commission, or CPSC, says about 251,000 units of Yodo mini speakers used by children 3 to 12 years old for audiobooks, podcasts, and other entertainment are linked to the recall. CPSC says the lithium ion batteries can overheat and catch fire. There have been no injuries, but parents are urged to remove the units from children's access and to contact Yodo for a free replacement smart charging cable. The CDC is investigating an illness potentially linked to fake botulinum toxin, the main component of Botox injections. Multiple patients in Illinois and Tennessee have recently reported feeling botulism-like symptoms. Botulism is an illness caused by a botulinum toxin and can attack the body's nerves and cause muscle paralysis. And now health departments are on alert after two of the people received injections from a nurse who was acting outside of her role. But the CDC warns that any cosmetic injection should be given by licensed providers in proper settings. The demand for O.J. Simpson memorabilia grows. The notorious athlete died Thursday after a battle with cancer. He was 76 years old. Now anything signed by O.J. Simpson is growing in value. You're not going to be able to get any more of O.J.'s autographs. Whatever's out in the marketplace is, is it. And over time, over the years, the longer that he has passed away, his stuff will just go higher and higher because um, you're not able to get it. And Scriptograph's memorabilia says it sold more than 100 O.J. Simpson items yesterday morning. The traffic crashed their website. Well, the Biden administration announced a new rule which closes the so-called gun show loophole. Democrats are celebrating the move, but it will likely face a court challenge. Fox News correspondent Connor Hansen has the story. Today is a big day for America for common sense gun safety reform. A new rule proposed under the Biden-Harris administration will require thousands of dealers who sell guns at gun shows or online to be licensed with the ATF. 
That means they'll have to run background checks on buyers, just like regular brick-and-mortar gun stores. Today's new action furthers the Biden-Harris administration's historic efforts to stop the illegal flow of guns and hold those who supply firearms used in crime accountable. The rule stems from a sweeping bipartisan gun law signed in 2022 after the mass school shooting in Uvalde, Texas. It will show parents, kids and teachers and Americans everywhere impacted by gun violence that Congress is listening. But some Republicans who helped pass that law say this new rule goes too far and are already trying to block it. Shame on the ATF, shame on the Biden administration, shame on the administrators of B uh, the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act for playing political games. The rule will likely be challenged in court by pro-Second Amendment groups. It does have exceptions for people reselling a gun to a family member or selling off their personal collection. According to the ATF, guns sold through unlicensed dealers were used in nearly 370 shootings between 2017 and 2021. The White House is also calling on Congress to pass universal background checks, red flag laws, and an assault weapons ban. In New York, Connor Hansen, Fox News. And those are our top consumer watch stories this morning. Now let's take a look at the market prices before the opening bell. Just stop ringing. I knew that she was in danger. Casino Resort and Vance Automotive Group. A close call for a driver in Indianapolis, uh, Indianapolis, rather, a woman was able to escape her car after it was caught in rising floodwaters. Thanks to some encouragement from a handful of bystanders, Gina Glorios has the story. Three bystanders we spoke to say they were at the right place at the right time. To wake up. Thinking you're going to go to work and then have your car flooded is it's terrible. Jaden and Shane McClellan were in the area for their lawn care business. And there was a couple other cars around here. They were just all sitting in there. They weren't move, moving. Their dad, who didn't want to go on camera, jumped into action. He was like, get out of your car, get out of your car. I mean, she could walk out. She was just scared. I mean, I would be too. McClellan estimates the water was a couple feet deep at the time and rising. The woman was able to get out of her car on her own. All I can do is thank God, though, because it's not on us. It really isn't. God put us in the right place at the right time. He did it. He saved her life. It wasn't us. IMPD says her car is among a handful towed from this street Thursday morning alone. What's it going to be, five minutes or your car? I just turn around, never try to move through moving water. Thankfully, no one was hurt. We didn't think it was going to be this bad, but we're not going to be able to mow for a while, sadly. <laughs> but I'm glad every, everyone's safe and everybody's all right. That's, that's the most important thing. And again, authorities are reminding drivers to turn around, don't drown. If you can't see the road ahead of you, they say there's no way to know just how deep the water is. And we've talked about that with heavy rain flooding Absolutely, around here. Yes. Turn around, don't drown. You don't know how fast that water is moving, and it doesn't take a lot to be able to sweep your car yeah, away. An important reminder indeed. Absolutely. And thankfully, no flooding concerns in our forecast, at least not for the next several days. Taking a live look from our camera on the Cornell Complex downtown Joplin. We've got clear skies out there, clear skies from our camera at 7th and range line too. However, it is a bit on the cold side out there. Temperatures have been chilly through the majority of the morning hours out there. We're into the upper 30s and low 40s across the area, but the good news is we're all going to warm up ahead of highs going seasonably warm. Upper 60s, maybe a couple of low 70s out there. We'll have sunny skies and we're also looking at uh, winds at west at about 5 to 10 miles an hour. Now again, we do have that severe threat as we run into Monday and Tuesday of next week. We're going to talk about that and your extended forecast plus the news you need to know right after this. Farewell. Earned many medals including two Purple Hearts. We are proud to salute Jerry Kerr, a four state hero. Here's a check of today's top headlines. The news you need to know before you head out the door. Neosha, Missouri school counselor Jacob Oaks has turned himself in for a statutory rape charge. Authorities say 40 year old Oaks sexually assaulted a minor several times from 2021 to this year. After turning himself in, he immediately posted bond. 
The Neosho School District says Oaks was put on leave when they became aware of the allegations. A new court motion is seeking to release the name of the Joplin police officer who fatally shot a two-year-old girl nearly two years ago. Sniper 1, a Joplin SWAT team officer, fatally shot a two-year-old Cleslin Crawford while responding to a domestic violence call in Baxter Springs in March of 2022. The court document states the profound interest in uncovering the truth far outweighs the privacy of Sniper 1. Pittsburgh police arrest two people in connection with the overdose and death of 18-year-old Cooper Campiti. Campiti died of a fentanyl overdose last April. This Wednesday, police arrested two suspects believed to have sold Campiti the drugs. Official charges against the suspects are pending. A reminder, we have that severe threat Monday into Tuesday, so this is where severe storms are likely Monday evening and Monday night and where they could be as well. And that threat will continue to shift to the east as we go into our Tuesday, and we could see some lingering strong to severe scattered storms on our Tuesday across the area as well. Between now and then, though, the weekend breezy southwest winds gusting upwards of 35, but temperatures into the 80s out there. 80s on Monday, the upper 70s on Tuesday, 80s Wednesday, another system puts us back to normal next week into the 60s and we'll have some storm chances Thursday, Saturday and Sunday. Today is certainly a great start to what yeah. I hope will be a great weekend. Today is a beautiful yes, day. Absolutely. Well, a one of a kind prop from Star Wars is going up for auction. The giant chicken leg stilts worn by English actor Peter Barber, who played the stilt monster in the 1977 Star Wars movie, are set to go on sale at the Hanson's Auctioneers Star Wars themed auction on May 3rd. Hanson says the stilts can be seen just after the bar scene in Star Wars 4 A New Hope. The auction house expects the props to sell somewhere between $1,000 to $2,000. $100. So some interesting pieces of movie history for sci-fi buffs out there. Star Wars fans. They, yes. uh, they had a huge Star Trek auction a few years ago. Oh, and boy, uh, yeah, somebody got the actual movie model of the Enterprise that they used. And well, certainly it's a like price six feet them, long. Sure. Wow. It's Incredible. Ridiculous. ridiculous. <laughs> well, thank you all so much for letting us put the good in your morning. We're going to be back with more news and weather today at noon. You have a great rest of your morning.